Hello and welcome to another episode of the Portrait Profits Show. My name is Jim Landers and my mission is simple. I help photographers like you make a great income doing what they love. Each week you get tips and systems on the business side of photography designed to help you gain a mastery over marketing and sales. Reducing the struggles that most photographers face so you can finally get what you deserve. You're in the right place. Welcome to the Portrait Profit Show. The Portrait Profit Show is brought to you by Digital Pro Lab and Landers Photography School. And to get more information about Digital Pro Lab, please go to digitalprolab.com. Amanda will appreciate it. Um, go to digitalprolab.com. And for Landers Photography School, landersphotoschool.com. Or just send me an email, jim at landersphotoschool.com. Or leave me a message here in the comments of this show. Now, this show is simulcast to eight different places, and uh, it could be more if we wanted to. However, the software program that we use limits it to eight, but the fact that it's able to simulcast the show to several different places is fantastic. We use a program that's called, or a platform that's called StreamYard, and you can see this going across your screen right here at the bottom right now that uh, says a little bit more about that. But if you click that link that you see there, just go to StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook. It's in the post that was created. Uh, so if you just go to the, the post, the text that's in the in the post this uh, the show is in, you can just click that link or you can type it in. It's pretty short streamyard.com forward slash facebook that gives streamyard permission to use your name otherwise it says facebook user for me i don't know who it is that sends it um and there are some platforms i'm not sure which ones apple might be i'm not sure that it still doesn't work um so most platforms it does 90 you know 90 percent of them but uh, occasionally you do come across some that even after clicking that it doesn't it doesn't seem to do anything, uh, but most of them do. So take a moment to do that. That way, when you comment, I'll be able to see it. Now, I also want you to uh, uh, click that live uh, or enter in live. So in the comments section right now, take a moment, enter in hashtag live. That causes me to know who's here. And if you're watching this as a replay, do me a favor, enter in hashtag replay. That way, when I'm looking back at the comments and I'm commenting, I'll know who was watching live and who's watching later uh, and to be able to respond appropriately, but also know who was here and when. So thank you guys for being here. I also want to, of course, for you to take a moment to share. Uh, so click that share button. Help us get more people watching the Portrait Profit Show. When you may think, well, I want to keep all the good information to myself, but that's not actually beneficial to you or your business because when you uplift others, it becomes the norm. And you may come across every once in a while someone saying your prices are high. Well, if everyone watched the Portrait Profit Show, I'm pretty sure that we wouldn't have that comment quite so often. It doesn't matter. You're going to get it at some at some extent, but the difference will be different. Um, and so we want that. We want a price that causes you to be independent. It causes you to have photography as a uh, as a real career, as, as a good profit source. We want that to become a reality for everyone who wants it because there's room for all of us. So do me a favor. Click that share button right now. Click that share button. Let other people know that this exists. And if there's someone in particular who you think would benefit from watching the show in the comments, enter in the at symbol and their name with no spaces and it will send them a link. So do that. Either one of those, do them both. Enter in, uh, uh, in uh, click on that share button and uh, let, let people know about this, about this show. All right. So today, we are going to be talking about harmony between client requests and artistic style. Now, for some of us, this is an obvious thing. We don't really put a whole lot of thought into it. <clears throat> Maybe we have at certain points throughout our career, but not, not necessarily all the time, but it comes up uh, and we think about that. And there's times when someone asks us to do something we don't want to do really. Uh, so do we accommodate the request? Maybe. Do we decline it. It depends. So I think we should define for ourselves what it is that we do so that we know clearly 
when we go ahead and do the request or we decline the request and also have a way to explain it in a way that makes you sound intelligent and know what you're doing. You're a pro after all. You're the expert after all. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So what's more important, client requests or artistic style? For many pros, it's a delicate balance between, uh, uh, bet well, well, it's a delicate balance that's mastered over time. In this show, I'm going to unlock some new thoughts, new processes, new considerations, and new levels of inspiration to bring harmony to you and your clients. So who is in control of the photography? It's your business, but who's in control of what you do in your business that's, that can be seen by your clients? Is it the photographer or is it the client? Well, that's where we come to this story today, this lesson today, harmony between client requests and artistic style. So in this lesson, we'll talk about that harmonious relationship between finding balance and synergy um, between the clients and your artistic style. There are multiple correct choices. So we'll talk about the extremes and the, the, uh, everything that's in between. So the extremes would be, um, where you are doing your thing, your artistic approach and not allowing any, any, um, uh, suggestions or thoughts or, uh, uh uh, requests to be added and that's fine that's one business model that works uh, but then the opposite extreme is you are uh, going with the flow you're doing everything that the client asks for and it's not really your art anymore it's it's you being an, an order taker which again is fine you will get business either way you have to choose what's best for you and the target market that you want to work with. So uh, there is no, when I'm describing the tools that are available to you, these choices that you have, there's, there's not a bad tool. Now there's a tool that there's tools that can be used poorly or they're not the right tool for what you're trying to accomplish. But as far as in general, all the tools, all the different things that I might talk about, they aren't bad in and of themselves. It's how they're used that could become that way. Uh, you know, so when you go into a Home Depot or Lowe's, uh, you know, one of these these big stores, the tools that you didn't buy, that doesn't make them bad. It just means they weren't right for what you were trying to accomplish at that moment. So please don't think that if I'm saying something about one tool and something else about another that I like one better than the other, they're tools in a tool store. You choose the one that's the right one for you. Now, you may not know which tool is the right one for you. That's fine. I get it. This is a, one of the many ways where I help photographers to narrow down so that it becomes obvious because the difference between struggle and success is not doing the good things or knowing the difference between good and bad or wrong. Successful people become successful because they can tell the difference between the good things and the right things. And if you haven't defined your destination, where you're headed, what you're trying to accomplish, it isn't possible to know what's right. And if you think you know what's right and you haven't defined your end result, where you're heading, you are mistaken. This is a good use of the word ignorant, although I know that word's a trigger word for some people, but only for those who don't actually know the definition. Ignorant just means the things you don't know yet. There's a lot more stuff we're ignorant of than we're knowledgeable of. So we want to get to know these things. We want to have an open mind. We want to know that these are just tools and that we choose the ones that are right for us, but we can only do that if we define what we want as an end result. So while there are multiple choices to choose from, there are multiple choices even just in the extremes, but you're blending client preferences to your unique approach and you're doing what you want to do without client request. Those are the extremes. So doing your own thing, not, not, not allowing or uh, accepting client requests is one way.
and it's fine. It's good. Another way, and again, extreme, is allowing your client to do everything, to suggest everything, to to tell you the light, the the location they want to be photographed in, to tell you the time that they want to be photographed, to tell you how long the session is going to take. I see that all the time. Someone says, "I just need a thirty minute or an hour session." Unless they do this all the time, maybe they are pros that are requesting that. But a lot of times, it's just a mom who has a want um, and they're telling you as the artist how long it's going to take that actually makes no sense if you view yourself as an artist i mean let's say you paint on canvas do you think your clients their clients are telling them how long it's going to take to paint no the end result is the only variable that matters now they may have some color requests to match their the room that it's going to go in and that individual artist may choose to accept or accommodate those kinds of requests but it's up to the artist to decide what's right for them. All the tools, all the choices are good choices. They just aren't all right for you. All right. I mentioned earlier that I want you to share this. Now, let me get into a little bit about that before I move into the rest of today's topic. The Portrait Profit Show. As you know, Amanda and I from Digital Pro Lab, deliver the Portrait Profit Show to you every single Monday, every Monday, even holidays. Sometimes it's a pre-recorded show in, in, in that instance. Christmas falls on Monday this year. So therefore, yeah, we're going to pre-record that show. I won't be live that day. Um, but every single Monday, without fail, we have a Portrait Profit Show. And we don't charge a dime thing, a, a thing a, nothing. We charge nothing for it. It's a gift that Amanda from Digital Pro Lab and myself, Jim Landers from Landers Photography School are giving to you. And all we ask is that you click the share button. We're not charging, but there's no such thing as a free lunch. So here's what you're doing to pay. Press the share button. <laughs> That's what we're asking for. Tell other people about this. Allow others to know and to grow and become better at what it is they do. So that's all I want. Click the share button. Now back to today's lesson. This topic today was inspired by a Facebook post, which isn't really all that unusual. A lot of my topics have been in the past inspired by someone's Facebook post. The majority of them come from my own students who are, are asking questions, and I'm thinking, oh, that's a good one. That's a, that's a, a, you know, a good topic for a, a future Portrait Profit show. And it seems like they are endless. I mean, today is number 122, so I, I don't know if they are endless, but coming up with topics for the show has been easy because there are so many variables, so many things to discuss. It's kind of fantastic it's kind of cool i love it um so the post that inspired this went something like this do you persuade your clients into what you want or what you prefer or do you allow them to have full control that's probably not exactly what it was i, I but it was something along those lines. Now, that particular post you won't be able to find because the person who wrote it within an hour of posting it took it took it down, so it's actually not there anymore. I um, when I saw it, it was during that short period of time that it was actually up, and I thought, oh, that's a good topic for a portrait profit show. So I wrote it down, and I actually started writing a response to that that person's post, um, but they had deleted it before I was able to post it. I sometimes get a little long in my descriptions or answers to questions, which some people really appreciate and others, they just say too many words, and move on to the next thing. Hey, do what, do you. <laughs> so in one way or another, I've seen questions like this multiple times. In my experience working with photographers at every level from, you know, beginning to those who are uh, and have been doing this for decades. I would say that most of us have spent time thinking about this. There's some that just, you know, went in and started doing what they do and, and they're kind of stuck with it uh, and, and it became normal. So to each their own, my thoughts are my thoughts. 
you don't you don't apply uh, in every situation. Um, but in general, are they the, the, my thoughts don't apply in every situation. But in general, low volume portrait photography, in my opinion, is an art form. By the way, I do come across people who don't agree with that. Not very many, though. That's pretty rare. And so to me, it's about creative expression, uh, individual style. But bottom line, is, it is a business. We're, we're not doing it just for fun. We enjoy it. We love it. That's why we're doing it. But it is a business. And so we can't just ignore that side. We, we can't do little cop out comments like, well, I'm not trying to get rich. That's not the point. I mean, that's that's a that's an out. It doesn't cause you to grow and learn and 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 become a little bit better at what you do. That puts a wall in front of that. It's a it's a worthless comment. I'd say it's worse than worthless comment. I'm not trying to get rich with this. So what? It doesn't change anything. It causes you not to listen. So while you do consider your clients' preferences and you ensure their satisfaction. It's also important to find a balance between accommodating their requests and staying true to your artistic vision. Again, this is just one guy's opinion. It doesn't even apply in all situations. So my thought, my comment, my base is I want you to just do what brings you the most joy and fulfillment. By the way, if this has been helpful or if you're anticipating that it's going to be helpful, will you do me a favor right now? Go to the comments and just enter the word yes. Now, if you want to add a little bit more, something that you've heard that you've liked or disagree with, it doesn't matter. There are more opinions than mine. And I love hearing other opinions. And I don't think of them as being wrong. I think of them as being right for them. Put yes in the comments or expand on that. Or just say thank you. It could be as simple as that. Um, so interact with me multiple times in the comments section. I want to know that you're here. I, I, I'm not just talking to myself, right? I can see there's a bunch of you here. I, on my screen, it shows me. It doesn't show me every single channel that uh, every single place that I'm simulcast to. There's five different uh, YouTube, or excuse me, five different Facebook pages, two YouTube channels, and a LinkedIn page that this is simulcast to right now. And the uh, it shows me the one that has the most, uh, and that one has uh, 11 watching, and the uh, it has five likes and loves. So, and I don't know about the other channels because it's just showing me one. It's because it takes up too much space. So they're only showing the top one. Um, but I, I, I encourage those likes and loves. If you hear something you like, here's something you love. You know, I, I see it. I, I appreciate it. So hit that like and love button. Uh, feel free to do that. All right. So do what brings you the most joy, the most fulfillment. Uh, so I say... I say this because I, I want that to be a part of your world. And it, when we invest our time to things that are always uncomfortable, well, that, that, that stresses out a creative. However, it also broadens a creative. So it's not that we never do anything that's outside of our comfort, comfort zone. We should always be doing things outside of our comfort zone. But we've got to define what it is we do best. And so that we are attracting those kinds of people who want that and who fit our description of a an ideal target market. I want you to focus your preferences and constantly develop your skill in that area. As a result, you're going to form a unique and recognizable artistic voice. <clears throat> this sets you apart from others and it attracts the, uh, the clients who appreciate and resonate with your artistic voice. Do you really want to, or do you, do you really want people who are picky picking and pulling at you from every angle? Cause I'd rather work with those who know what I do and who want it and who seek me out. 
but to each their own. While it's tempting to accommodate every request from a client, especially early on, many of us do that at first. So we get used to it. It becomes our norm. We do it through our entire careers. Again, not saying it's bad. It becomes your norm, though. Because it becomes normal to us, it feels right. Remember that anyone can do that, though. Just accommodate every request is, is a baseline. That's what a lot of people do. And you may think, well, I'm better at it than others. That's the difference. You may be. But that's hard thing to market. I mean, do you put on your marketing that I'm better at following directions from my clients than anybody else? Not exactly. You may say it in some different words, of course. But anyone can say, I care about my clients, so I do whatever they want. I go with the flow. Someone starting today could say those words. So they aren't a good differentiator. You are going to get sales on it, and someone, again, could do it through their entire career. So I'm not saying it's a bad tool. For some, it's the right tool. For those who consider what they do art, it, generally speaking, isn't the right tool. I am generalizing. I have to. I'm not talking to one individual person. As you become more skilled and confident in your style, You'll find that clients will seek you out for that distinct style and expertise. And you'll wind up with people who want what it is that you do. The thing that makes you happiest. Building a strong portfolio and develop a, developing a reputation for your preferred aesthetic will attract clients who align with your artistic vision, leading to more personally fulfilling, creatively satisfying work. That being said, it does not change the way, or it doesn't change in any way, the fact that it's essential to maintain open and effective communication with your clients. During the initial consultation, you call it what you want. It could be a planning session. It could be a phone call that begins it all, a response to an email or a web form. That initial consultation where you have the ability to have back and forth communication listen and understand their expectations even if you don't give them any or much leeway discuss your style and share what they can expect of you this way you can set realistic expectations and ensure that both parties them and you are on the same page before they have an opportunity to decide to work with you and put their money down the goal is not to get to a yes with every single prospect that crosses your path. I know for some it is. And I understand why it might be that way. But there is no tool in the, in the tool store that is the right tool for every single job. There is no photographer who is the right tool for every single job. So if you're trying to be that, you're trying to be one tool in a tool store that can do everything. Let's be realistic. You can't. You can try. You can be very average at a whole bunch of stuff. And you will get better than you were yesterday. But you won't be as good as those who seriously focus. And you wind up with people who, a lot of them that are, are wonderful and great but you also wind up with some people who you don't want to work with. It'd be like working retail. If you worked at a retail place, there are times when you come across a person who you wouldn't have chosen to work with that you might complain about later. So why would you put yourself in that position if you're the boss, if you're the decision maker? That's just my thought. You don't have to share it. So the goal is not to get to a yes with every single client, in my opinion, every single prospect. The goal is to help them find the tool that is right for them. You're just a tool to help them get what they want. There are two main types 
of photographers. Now, there's a lot of different types of photographers, and we'll talk about those next week on the Portrait Profit Show. Our, our, our subject next week is, is vocabulary. We're going to be talking about you know different things that make up portrait business vocabulary. It's phrases, it's words, it's descriptions, it's different types of photography that a portrait photographer could be doing. So headshots, lifestyle photography, experiential photography, there's a bunch of them. We'll be talking about them. We'll be talking about why I use the words that I use. Why I don't say taking pictures when I'm talking about my work. Because if the neighbor could do it, the neighbor's not a pro. So if I'm talking in the same way that the neighbor would talk if they were to come over and photograph my family in my backyard, then I have to adjust. I have to change. So I differentiate myself from the neighbor. And so I don't say taking pictures. I might say that about the next photographer if they say, so what's the difference between you and the next photographer that I, that I, that I just visited or that I'm going to visit? I can say, oh, they take good pictures. I create emotional photographs. And of course, I'm going to go on, but for reasons to keep it short, I'm not going to. But vocabulary makes a difference. We'll talk about that next week. But there are two main types of portrait photographers, the generalists and the specialists. Let's talk about the general. Well, let's talk, uh, to attract your target market, it all starts with your marketing. So you, and the goal, of course, is that you wind up with the clients that are best suited for you and your business. So let's talk about to the generalists. And again, these are all just tools. I'm not saying whether they're good or bad because they are all good. They may not be right for what you're trying to do, but they are good tools, every one of them. For the generalists, during the planning session, it's helpful to strike a balance between incorporating your artistic vision and accommodating your client's preferences. Now, at an extreme, you are solely listening to your clients and solely doing what they say. You're an order taker at a fast food restaurant. You take what they asked, you do that, and you don't make any changes or additions. You do what they say. So order taker, not a negative. It's a good job. People make money. You may do some, as far as generalists, um, very few are the strict definition. There's some change, there's some uh, change or some uh, difference in that definition. They add their own personal style. Uh, and so they aren't generally going to be the very specific definition of a generalist. So some are going to suggest alternative locations or uh, uh, different times of day, different poses that may be aligned with your style or your level of expertise. Because if someone wants something specific and you don't know how to do it or you don't think you do it well, because I've come across photographers who are anti-flash, anti-artificial lighting. And the reason why, and I'm, I'm picturing specific instances. So there are times when people specialize in natural light photography and they know how to do art, um, uh, art, artificial lighting. Um, but for those who, are, who, who don't know how to do artificial lighting, who are doing uh, natural lighting only, it'd be like going to a tool store and only be able to work with one aisle. You are limiting yourself. Flash isn't bad. There's no tools that are bad. So if you are saying... I don't use flash because flash is harsh and unnatural. That would be like the carpenter saying, and if you guys have watched this show, I've said this one before. It'd be like a carpenter saying, I don't use hammers because hammers go through sheetrock walls. Is it the hammer's fault? Really? No. It's your misuse of the tool that caused the hammer to go through the wall. Just like flash. If you don't like flash because it's harsh and unnatural, it's because you're doing it wrong. You're putting the hammer through the wall. Too much power in the flash. When you look at flash that's done right, <laughs> you're highly unlikely to take it off the menu. It's a tool. It's a good tool. 
when used correctly, just like all tools. For the generalist, by gently guiding, guiding the planning, guiding the session, and offering your professional opinion, you can create a collaborative atmosphere. It's going to result in unique and compelling photographs that are still going to inspire you, even though they have been heavily influenced by your clients. <clears throat> so you're going to be proud. You're going to be excited to share the uh, the work that you create in your marketing, even in those situations. Now, some, uh, you know, have do sessions that they would never the photographs from they would never use to market. Um, and there's different reasons for that. But if the reason that you would not use the certain photographs for marketing, if the reason is because the client requested something that you didn't agree with or didn't like, come on, should you really be doing those things? Or someone, some photographer who specializes in exactly that, shouldn't they be the one who does that? Shouldn't you be the expert who knows the difference between the tools and suggest the tool that's the right one for the job? which means in, at some points, people, other photographers. Uh, to me, that's an obvious one. I know that's not obvious to everyone, but to all of us, it's to a different extent. I consider my clients to be contributors to my art. I consider them to, or I consider what we're creating to be a collaborative work between my clients and me. Now, I tell my clients what it is I do. I show them what I do. They've seen what I do, and they come to me for what I do. But I do accept client requests. So I'm not uh, telling them this is the way I do it, and that's it. That is, either way is a good one. That's for specialists. We'll get to that here in a second. Um, I am a specialist who does allow for some uh some uh, suggestions by my clients, which most of us are in in that range or some some degree of it. That's pretty normal. So by finding the right balance between client preferences and your own artistic style, you you build a good reputation. You find the people, the people who, who you want to work with, find you. So the specialists, let's go to the opposite end. Now, I've already talked about the middle talk about it again here in a second. Specialist. As a specialist, you hone specific skills. You are just the hammer, just the screwdriver, just the circular saw. But maybe you do other things too. You've, you're developing a deep understanding of the thing or things that you choose to do, your genre or genres. <clears throat> this expertise sets you apart. It attracts clients who specifically want your unique style and your unique vision. Just like a generalist, though, it's important to invest time in client education. It's important to share your approach and the reasons why you do what you do. As I mentioned before, it starts with your marketing so that you're attracting the people who you want to work with. Those who value what you do, value your knowledge, value your expertise, uh, and, and how it contributes to the uh, creating your beautiful, amazing photographs uh, in whatever specific genre that you've chosen. By effectively communicating that expertise, your clients trust you, giving you freedom to do what it is you specialize in because they want you to do you. They want you to be to, they want to have what it is they've seen of your work. They want to work with you. During the planning session, you provide guidance and suggestions that align with your expertise and highlight the elements or unique techniques and perspectives that will result in your signature style. By consistently delivering ex exceptional and uh, distinctive results in your specialized genre, you will build a reputation as an expert. Word of mouth 
uh, word of mouth rep uh, recommendations and positive feedback from happy clients will help you attract more clients who are going to appreciate your you and your artistic vision. Emphasize your specialization in your marketing efforts. Showcase your portfolio and success stories to appeal to clients who are specifically looking for what it is you do. Whether you choose to be a generalist or choose to be a specialist or for most of us somewhere in between. Let me give an example of a specialist who does not allow client suggestions. At least it's not obvious that they do. Have you heard of the newborn photographer named Ann Geddes? She photographs babies in sets that the, she has created this set and the the mom and dad uh, have decided they like that they you know peas in a pod or uh, uh, a baby in a um you know lots of different things i'm picturing the pea in the pod so much that i'm not seeing the others in my mind right now but um th she has these sets that are set up you you don't say when you get there you know what i decided um i don't like those peas and uh, I was thinking maybe string beans would be better. Can we switch that? Can we do, can we, you know, no, people don't do that because she's told them what it is they're going to get when they come here. It would be like going to a, uh, a burger place and saying, I think I want beef and broccoli. Well, you didn't go to a place that sells that they have beef. It's quite possible that they have broccoli, although I doubt it. Maybe they could substitute some lettuce. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, but maybe they could have something that looks a little something like it. Are they going to do that? No. That's not what they specialize in. That's not what they've gotten known for. That's not what their marketing says about them. Specialists generally aren't those who don't accept anything else. Specialists often accept client requests to a degree. Generalists normally accept every client request within reason, unless it's something they don't have the ability to do because it's beyond their level of expertise, which means they have a class that they need to take. <laughs> There's your sign. <laughs> um, so... Whether you choose to be a generalist, a specialist, somewhere in between, the key is to create work that excites and fulfills you while also meeting client expectations. By understanding your clients, effectively communicating your artistic approach and staying true to your own style. When you do those things, you can build a successful photography business that reflects your passion, reflects your expertise, bringing you joy and a fantastic income. That'd be a good thing, huh? Let me talk about, by the way, if you, if you, are you getting some stuff out of this? Is this beneficial? Let me, let me know. Put yes in the comments. Um, I, if this is resonating with you, put yes in the comments. If you are hearing something that you, he, that you understand and that you're flowing with, that you're, that, that resonates with you, let me know in the comments. Tell me, let me know. I'm going to look over the comments real quick. I, I don't have them on all the time because there's several different windows. Uh, so uh, I guess I should do a, a handful of shout outs. I can see. I can see Stacia. I can see Amber. Hey, Amber. I can see Juan and uh, Robin. And uh, wow, a lot of Facebook users. Um, and that just means I can't see your name. Uh, so there's several, and there's a bunch. Um, so uh, it's a good way to remain anonymous. Uh, I see Rick. Uh, and I see Fred. How's it going, Fred? And uh, Lupe. Awesome. I love that you guys are here and that you're with me. Uh, and so, I want to talk about the four variables of creating harmony with your clients. There, I could break this out into more, but four is a good number. So, and each one of these are relatively short. So the first one is communication. So of course, effective communication is important throughout the entire process. I call it the entire creative process from that, that moment that you um, have the first 
initial contact, which could be an email, a web form, a phone call, it could be in person, but whatever that initial, the fir very first time, all the way to the end and you get to define what the end is because different photographers do different things uh, some are uh, just digital and they send out the digital some uh, uh, have a, a process where they put the images online and allow people to print others do it in person process and have them print others um, do framing and even still others do the installation on the wall uh, those who go through and give all do everything for a client so there is no work for the client to do those are called full service something we'll go over next week in the vocabulary issue um so i uh, the the um there's a lot of different things that you could do and again they're all tools you, you may think that i'm describing one in a negative way well that's because you don't that's because you, you see something in it that is is uh, affecting you in some way positive or negative but it's your interpretation that causes you to see it as negative or positive because these are just tools and all of them are good. It's just not that not the, not all of them are right. And the difference between someone who struggles and, and someone who is successful is knowing the difference between good and right, not good and bad. That's an easy one. Putting good things in front of you all the time is the path to struggle. You have to know what's right so that you can get down that path. For instance, uh, you've heard me say this before, all roads are good. All roads are good. But not all roads take you where you want to go. Okay, there's some roads with potholes that aren't so good. So I am generalizing. Let's say all roads are new today. All roads are good. They just don't all take you where you want to go. Same thing with all the choices you have in front of you. If you're putting good choices in front of you all the time, you are struggling. because you haven't defined where you're going. Now, you may not feel like you're struggling. A lot of you are, and you feel it. But if you don't feel it, you can do good things and bring in income just by doing good things. And it might be satisfactory. The bottom line is, if you defined where you were going, you would only go on the roads that cause you to get there. And those other good roads, you wouldn't stop or go down. Just my opinion. So, of course, effective communication is important from beginning to end. But just like beauty, that means something different to every single one of us. And that's wonderful. So in this instance, having effective communication with a client is having open and honest discussions with your prospects and your clients throughout the experience with you about their expectations, about preferences, about their desired outcomes, about what it is you do. You must know yourself and your product. You have to know both well enough to know that when you're not the right tool, as well as when you are the right tool. If you think you're the right tool every single time, there are some things that you still could grow in and learn. You're going to encourage your clients to express their vision by asking thoughtful questions that clarify their thoughts and expectations. In addition to actively listening, you're going to clearly articulate your own artistic style and your approach from the beginning as well as throughout the, the entire creative process, from the initial consultation to whatever it is that is your last step to keep them informed and aligned with the goals. It may be a good idea at times to encourage mood boards, to uh, encourage Pinterest boards, to gain insights into their preferences. But then there's times when that's not the right choice and you probably can feel the difference. Good communication though builds trust, enhancing the collaborative process. All right. Second one. Let's put that one up on the screen. Somehow I clicked on edit rather than put it on the screen. Uh, so the second one is managing expectations. Before they become a paying client, 
we're setting real realistic expectations. That's the communication part behind uh, before. Um, but this ex expands that just a little bit. Before they become that that paying client, set realistic set realistic expectations. Discuss your processes. Discuss your timeline. How long do things take? Discuss your policies, your costs, all before they have an opportunity to purchase from you. Be transparent about any limitations or challenges that might affect the outcome. Sometimes their requests cause more time or cause you to hire someone to accomplish something. Is it possible that you're not able to meet their deadline? Do you allow changes after the planning stage? If you do prints, do you allow changes after the print order? And this comes in, this comes in the policy section. By the way, I, I do a, um, a program that's called Essential Statements that covers all of this, and I do it for you. I ask you a bunch of questions so that I can do it for you, but I do it for you. I've got a lot of classes where you, uh, you take the class and then you apply what you've learned, but Essential Statements, I, I do it for you. Uh, now, we fine-tune it together. Uh, but it's done by the time we're done. There isn't anything left to do. Uh, it's a very time-consuming process on my part, so it isn't a cheap option, but man, does it save you some time and cause you incredible clarity, causing you to reach your goals very quickly, even those you didn't even realize you had. So essential statements. Got it. You'll love it. Anyway, so one way to manage expectations of course is to provide examples of your work and and uh, help clients have a clear understanding of the range of possibilities and the, the style that they can expect we don't want them to feel disappointed we don't want that for ourselves so we do everything in our power to inform educate uh, so that they have that clear understanding that we want them to have. And we do it throughout the entire creative process because saying it once is not good enough. You have said things to a client before and later on in the, in the process working with them, they said, Oh, I didn't know that. Or you never told me that. And you're like, uh, yeah, I did. Saying something once is not good enough. You guys, you have to say things multiple times. This isn't their area of expertise. This isn't something they do that they do every day. This is something you do every day. So yeah, it comes easy for you. Yes, you know it. And yes, you're continuing to grow in it, but they don't do that. So therefore, when you are talking, their mind wanders. You're going to say some pretty exciting things when you're talking about photographing their family or, or their high school senior, whatever it is. You're going to talk about some exciting things. They have brains. Guess what? Brains wander even when you're talking to them about some pretty serious stuff about your work, they're wandering, they're picturing what you said and having their family in that environment that you've just described. So therefore they're not giving your, the, you the, in very much of their attention at that point, but that's not a bad thing. That's a fantastic thing, but you have to know that's what's going on and you have to repeat yourself. Don't expect them to remember. Number three, flexibility. While maintaining your artistic style, to some degree, it may be necessary to adjust, to be adaptable, to be flexible. Even after a solid planning session, challenges arise. Things that you might not even consider planning. How about bad weather conditions or just unfavorable weather conditions. It wound up being way hotter than you expected that day. Uh, it, uh, it, it's really windy. So while it's a beautiful day, their hair is blowing in the wind. It may not be something you've done, planned for during the planning process. So it's not only important to be resourceful ahead of time while you're doing planning. It's important to have some things in place for when things come up. so that you have solutions in place that can overcome those obstacles. Now, based on what you're doing, it's possible that it, it's, that it's, that you may not be able to overcome it. It may be something so specific. It has to be rescheduled or, you know, there's other variables, but there are so many times when things can 
you can find a way to fix that problem. And so I say do it ahead of time. Plan ahead of time because you know things can go wonky during sessions. Uh, so it's not only important to be resourceful and find creative solutions to overcome those obstacles, but it's also crucial that you have a plan ahead of time for when those things do happen. So this when this is when you actually employ one of those alternative options, you're demonstrating your professionalism and your dedication to bringing your clients the results that you say you want to give them the best. Number four, client satisfaction. Now, anyone who's been around me for a while knows that I have no interest in satisfying my clients. I want to thrill them. I don't want someone coming over to their home and seeing the family portrait on the wall and saying, oh, that's a great photograph. I like it. And the 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 mom who's in the photograph, it's her family, says, yeah, it was okay. I don't want that. You don't want that. You want them to be thrilled. But the general category is client satisfaction. Ultimately, client satisfaction should be a priority. We all know that. We have to stay true to artistic style. So sometimes we're going to suggest things that are contrary to what someone has requested. It might mean that you're not the right tool for the job. It doesn't necessarily. But we are going to ensure that the final photographs align with our clients' expectations and desires. And if it's not something that we do or want to do, then we are referring someone else. I, in a not too far back, uh, so a handful of episodes ago, we did one on client feedback. And boosting loyalty with client feedback was the title. So you might want to go back and read that one or watch that one. But regularly seek feedback. And make necessary adjustments to ensure that that your clients are happy and that you are happy and you're building these long lasting relationships. Now, regularly seeking feedback is what we talked about in that that episode. It was number oh, it was one nineteen, I think, maybe one eighteen. So, and we're at one twenty two today. So it was pretty recent. Um, but regularly seek feedback to actively involve clients throughout the entire creative process to ensure that they're happy. Be open to making adjustments and modifications based on client input while comprom uh, or excuse me, without compromising your artistic integrity. Only deliver images that are in your style. Because if you have things that are all over the place, then it gets confusing if someone sees your work. For instance, years ago, I mean, I, 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 was, I began being a full-time photographer in 1991. This would have been in the 90s. Um, but uh, I photographed something, you know, a client asked for something. I said, sure, because I can press the button in front of anything. But it wasn't what I had done before. It wasn't normal. It wasn't unusual or weird, but I wouldn't use it for marketing purposes. I wouldn't show it because, well, I didn't want more of that business, but I was happy to do it. I think that's a waste of your time. No, at first when you're playing around, I give leeway for that because I want you to experience a lot of different things. But once you decide this isn't the right tool for the job, find someone out in the industry who does that really well. Form a relationship with them and send them business the next time that comes along. Chances are it won't come along all that often because you're going to do a good do job of marketing uh, what you do and you'll have plenty of clients coming in who already know what it is that you do. Only deliver images that are in your style, how you've described yourself. That way people can recognize you. It's not like logos from these big businesses that you've heard of all your entire life are changing their logo every day. They may change every once in a while. IHOP did it for a publicity stunt. They changed it to IHOB. Instead of International House of Pancakes, they change it to International House of Burgers, causing a frenzy. People were saying, well, I liked it being, being uh, 
International House of Pancakes. I go there because of the pancakes, not because of the burgers. I didn't even know about the burgers. Ah, okay. So it's a marketing tool. They never actually changed the name. It was simply a popular topic for a short period of time. So effective marketing. Uh, but I'm not recommending that you do that kind of thing. Um, we all, uh, what we all want is a result that makes both parties happy. All right. So I want to, uh, I want to talk about increasing harmony indirectly. Those are, those are direct ways that I just mentioned. So let's talk about increasing harmony, harmony indirectly. I want you to continuously educate yourself about new te techniques, trends, and client preferences to expand your client repertoire, your creative repertoire, and cater to a diverse range of requests. If you're a generalist. Either way, build a portfolio that showcases what it is that you do. If you're a generalist, it's showing the diversity or the, the versatility of the things that you're able to do. That would be right if you were a generalist, an extreme generalist. If you're a specialist, you're not going to include every single thing you, you do. I, I don't recommend a portrait photographer putting images of their, their the landscape that, they, that they're so proud of that they created at their last vacation. Yes, it's a beautiful image. Maybe use it as a background somewhere, but don't put it in your portfolio. It needs to describe who you are. People need to have a clear picture, a clear understanding of what it is that you could provide for them. I want you to seek professional development opportunities, attend workshops, take a biz, take on a business coach, get a mentor or five and engage with other photographers to learn from their experiences. Also personal branding and artistic and your artistic voice, a clear personal brand, and a distinct artistic voice attracts clients who are who are going to align with your style and reduce their concerns. So review your business statements regularly. Every business should have at least 14 different business statements. At least the five workspace statements. You guys have heard me say that one before. In fact, we had a, a, a past um, uh, portrait profit show on it. So we all at least need to have a mission, a vision, a value statement, a, a, a compelling way to describe yourself and a, in, in a very specific target market, clear target market. And I say workspace statements because I believe that they should be right in your workspace, Print it out, make them pretty if you want to, but so that they are constantly influencing your belief filter. When you're making decisions, you see those there. Are the decisions you're making in line with those things? That helps you understand the difference between good and right. Every business should have somewhere between 14, at least a minimum of 14. 14, 18 is pretty normal. There's times when they, they, they need more. Again, that's something that I help businesses do. It's time consuming for me, so it isn't a cheap option, but you'll see how it saves you a, a huge amount of time, causes you to do things you didn't even know you were supposed to do. And because of that laser focus, man, you are going to soar. So review those personal, those business statements and personal statements regularly and refine them as needed. You don't refine them very often, but refine them as needed. Keep your portfolio fresh and in line with your artistic style so that you are effectively communicating what you do and what you are as a tool to help them get what they want. All right. So are you liking this? Is this good? Are you getting something out of this? I'm almost done. I'm about to, to do my closing thoughts. So, I mean, if you're, if you're liking this, if this is great, tell me in the comments, let me know. I want to know. I'm about to end this. We're coming to a close. Tell me that you appreciated this. Tell me that this was good. Tell me you got something out of this, that you heard something that you can apply or that I enhanced something you already know. Let me know in the comments. By the way, when you write uh, thank you notes and such at the very end of the show, I, I put some of them up. I don't put them all up because there's there's a bunch um but I'll put some of them up at the end of the show while the closing music is is happening. Uh so encouraging you to do that. Um, so closing thoughts.
as we come to the end of this lesson, harmony between client requests and artistic vision, I want to leave you with some closing thoughts that I hope will inspire and empower you. As a portrait, as a portrait photographer, you're a storyteller, an artist with a, a unique vision and, and voice. Your work has power. It evokes emotions. It makes connections. It leaves lasting impressions. You find balance and synergy between meeting client requests and expressing your artistic style. Even when you specialize, there is a collaborative spirit in every job you accept. You are a guide, a confidant. You're a creative partner. You hear their requests. You hear their ideas as you create a foundation of trust and understanding. While staying true to your artistic style, be open to new perspectives. Be open to unexpected ideas and spontaneous or unplanned moments. Nurture your artistic voice. Cultivate your personal brand. And celebrate your unique talents. The path to your definition of success includes confidently expressing your vision and attracting those who appreciate and resonate with it. Your authenticity your being able to describe what it is you do is magnetic. You'll attract them. We definitely want to seek inspiration from our peers, seek out classes and workshops, getting a business coach, continually challenge yourself to push your boundaries. Your journey as a photographer is obviously, and you know this, an evolution where you refine and deepen your connection with your work and with your clients. So, Portrait Profits friends, feed your passion and continue to refine your purpose. Where appropriate, blend client requests with your artistic style. Welcome the challenges, celebrate the victories, and let your work speak. I want to thank you for joining me today. And may you always capture the beauty and the harmony that resides in the delicate balance between client desires and your artistic expression. Your portrait photography business captivates hearts, ignites imaginations, and leaves a lasting impact on those you serve and beyond. In just a moment, I'm going to tell you what the next classes are that's coming up. I mentioned one already, the vocabulary issue. Um, but there is the one that's right after that that um, I think you're going to want to be here for. Let, here, Stay with me for just a, a little bit longer while I share those. So if you got something that you could use today, if this has inspired you in some way, make a comment about it right now in the comment section. Make a post. Or just simply, just simply say thank you. But your words of encouragement are fueling me to bring you more valuable suggestions to elevate your portrait photography business. So I've got a few announcements. The annual San Antonio Youth Photography Tournament is coming up next month on July 23rd. Tickets are available. And if you go to the... Uh, uh, by the way, that's the kids version, 5 to 15. There is a regular version that's in October, so we don't need to talk about that one just yet. Um, but the 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 kids version is, this is its fifth year. Uh, the regular version that's in the fall is in its 11th year. But those uh, those tickets are available by going to the, uh, the annual San Antonio Photography Tournament Facebook page. So you can get more information there. So this year we have teamed up with the San Antonio River Foundation. And uh, we're going to be having the event, both the both events, the, the kids version and the regular version at Confluence Park on the San Antonio River. Now, only those who are here in San Antonio or surrounding areas are going to have an interest in that particular announcement. Or the next two that I have, 
Uh, if you'd like to be a volunteer on the planning committee for the kids and the regular tournaments, both, uh, then reach out to me at Jim at LandersPhotoSchool.com. I know if you're not local, you're probably not going to volunteer. But if you're local and you want to help with the photography tournaments, reach out to me, Jim at LandersPhotoSchool.com. And the third and final announcement before I get to the upcoming classes, I've got a photo 102, a cre it's called creative photography that begins Tuesday, July 11th, just around the corner. It's uh, 6 to 8 p.m. and it's a series of four consecutive Tuesday evenings that we'll be meeting. So go to uh, LandersPhotoSchool.com uh, or go to the Landers Photography School uh, web uh, Facebook page or website uh, to um, to get additional information. And if you're on my email list, by the way, go to LandersPhotoSchool.com. Up in the top right, it says get email updates. Add yourself to the list and then you'll know about these kinds of things because I've got a lot of stuff going on photography related that could help you out. Uh, so as you know, you get the Portrait Profit Show every single Monday. So I want to share with you what the upcoming titles are for the Portrait Profit Show. So let's bring those up. The next week I mentioned already, this is the uh, uh, Portrait uh, portrait Business Vocabulary. And let me take that off the screen real quick. There we go. And let me tell you a little bit about that one. Like your photography vocabulary, the words you use have potential to transform perceptions, understandings. Our vocabulary reveals values and it influences how you are perceived. So in this next episode of the Portrait Profit Show, we'll explore photography vocabulary and define the differences between various aspects of a portrait photography business. There's a lot of different types. We're going to talk about what those are, what the what what they're called, and what they mean. And then, of course, you use your own artistic vision and make your adjustments to to match what you do. But vocabulary is very important, and it's not something I think that you could over that you can just simply overlook. The next one is on July 3rd. And this is the one I kind of want you to get excited about. And the vocabulary one's cool. You're going to get you're going to get a lot of stuff out of that one. You're going to be taking a lot of notes. But on June 3rd, this one is called One Week to a Thriving Photography Business. Now, this one is going to be interesting. I want you to join me as we dive into a captivating tale where I am dropped off in a town that I'm unfamiliar with, with the goal of creating a prosperous photography business in record time. Get ready to be inspired, motivated, and equipped with the tools that I would use to start a thriving portrait business in only one week. What you'll learn is in this scenario, I have an old camera, so I start off with a simple items, but I don't have access to any of my, of the things that I would normally have. I don't have access to my database. Besides I'm in a, I'm in a different, in this scenario, I'm in a different town. I don't know anybody there. So my database wouldn't even help me, but I don't also have access to anything else, any other resources. I have my camera and I have the knowledge that I have. So it's kind of like starting over. What would I do? But you'll see how within one week, I guess I'll tell you a little bit. Well, no, it, it's it's exciting. You'll love it. So put that on your calendar. One week to a thriving photography business in two weeks from today. And then I'm going to tell you one more. Uh, this one is on uh, July uh, 10th. And this is the uh, panel discussion because on the second Monday of every single month, we do something a little different. We move it to 630 in the evening. So all of our sessions, all of our classes are at noon. But this one, the second Monday of every single month, we move it to 630 in the evening and we bring on panelists to discuss a topic. This one would be putting them in the situation that I described myself in the week before if I had to start over. So we'll be asking three different people their questions. Knowing what they know today, if they were to start over, 
what would they do? So put that on your calendar. I think you're going to like it. All right. Portrait Prophets, friends. As we end another Portrait Prophets show, I hope that the ideas and strategies that we have explored today have resonated with you so that you are moving forward with excitement. I encourage you to take risks, push your creativity, and experience your business soaring to extraordinary heights. You have the power to redefine your place in the portrait photography community and be a force of inspiration and empowerment. For Landers Photography School and Digital Pro Lab, this is Jim, Lan Jim Landers bringing you the weekly Portrait Profit Show, helping you excel in your portrait photography business through valuable tips and insights, helping you stay on track towards the, towards the success you deserve. Join us every Monday for evolving content as we unravel the mysteries of the business side of portrait photography. Thank you guys for being here. Bye for now.